Ever since we started this YouTube channel, I've been saying, oh, it rarely gets that cold where we live. You know, it hardly ever freezes. And every year I've been proven wrong. And this year we got all the way into February with only a half day of a sprinkling of snow that didn't stick on the ground. And I said to Kiva, oh, this might be the year that we get no snow. But again, proven wrong. Not even on Vancouver Island were we safe from the, the cold snap that's hit North America. As you can see, it's snowing away and there's been numerous consecutive nights where it's been below freezing. And uh, something has come up that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is sort of a follow-up to a video that we did two years ago. Man, time goes by fast. Uh, I'll link it uh, in a card uh, and I'll put it in the description, which is about condensation, some condensation issues we are having at the time. And so just to quickly recap on uh, what was happening back then was we first noticed condensation on the windows along just the bottom edge of the windows. Um, and to quickly speak to what the state of that is now, whenever it gets cold enough, there's, there is condensation on the windows. And because they're vinyl though, um, and there's not enough that it's like dripping down onto the wood it's not really an issue like the windows it's it's fine if there's a bit of condensation there is some mildew build up and it's kind of gotten a bit gross on the bottom and that's pretty much just due to neglect like um i really have been meaning to do a full clean of the windows on the glass of both sides and clean up that mildew and all that stuff so i i need to get to that but essentially the condensation is not really causing any damage the other thing that happened, um, you know, in that previous video was we were getting a lot of condensation on the plumbing piping underneath the sink. Uh, and that was actually a symptom from like a half-ass remedy that we had in put into place to prevent our, our water supply from freezing. Uh, because that was a temporary water supply setup. We didn't expect it to get super cold. It did. It froze. And so we started turning on a trickle of water so that there'd always be water flowing so we wouldn't have a chance to freeze. Um, and then because we had that cold water flowing through the pipes, they were always super cold and condensation was forming in the, on them and then dripping down onto the, the plywood below. And it was a, a big issue. So that was just a bad situation due to the circumstances uh, that we were in at that time. Um, that is no longer an issue. Obviously, we're not trickling the water uh, <laughs> through the through the plumbing like that anymore. Um, we actually uh, have a uh, proper heated cable uh, and wraparound insulation on our water supply in our new location. We have a video showing our um, how we put that together, and I'll link that in a card. Uh, and that has actually been working perfectly. So. We haven't had our water freeze, our water supply freeze, even though the temperature has been below freezing. And uh, our drainage system also hasn't fro frozen. There's been pretty much no issues uh, with that anymore. But what I did discover and the, what I want to get to in this video is uh, while we were finishing up um, a video about our bathroom sink drainage, which is coming out soon, I noticed some condensation on the floor underneath the uh, sink cabinet up against the wall. There were some beads of water there. And I thought, oh, that seems like it's, you know, not just something, you know, dripping from uh, the sink or anything. It looked like it was beads of water that were formed from condensation. So I decided I better have a look around the entire perimeter of the house. Because if you're familiar with how the Iron Eagle trailer is constructed, um, and if you're not, I'll put a playlist to all of our videos about it. Uh, there is uh, a sunken floor sort of design where uh, we build with wood and insulation our whole floor area. Uh, but then out on the, the perimeter, mostly the edges uh, along the long edge for, for our um, sort of slightly older uh, trailer design, there are these uh, metal side extensions that are a bit under a foot. Uh, that you can place your walls down onto and it's where you can fasten and secure the structure to the trailer. Uh, but the way that that is, is such that even after the wall is placed, the last couple inches of the floor before you hit the base, uh, before you meet up with the wall in that corner edge, 
uh, is over top of the metal of the trailer instead of over top of the wooden structure that you've built into the, the sort of sunken cavity. And uh, the way that we, des you know, the way that we built onto that was uh, very simple. We just laid down a half inch of, of plywood, uh, which was part of sort of like leveling it out with the rest of the floor structure. Then we have three quarter inch subfloor ply and then our f uh, flooring goes straight on top of that. So there's basically an inch of just wood with no insulation between the surface of the floor up against the, you know, near the, near the wall in the corner there uh, and the metal of the trailer. And so this is ultimately it's a failure in, on our part to design this better and get insulation in there because there are ways to um, improve upon this, which I'll get to in a sec. But I just want to finish my little story about what uh, I discovered here which was that uh, I, I moved from the um, bathroom and to, to continue down this wall underneath the couch. And of course we have like, I'm sort of, this is like a bit of a disaster because I pulled all this stuff out that was stored under there and had a look. And sure enough, there was quite a bit of condensation up against the wall in the corner, Re quite bad in this corner. Um, and also that corner, but this, this one was definitely the worst. And there was some mold there. It's just some, some white mold and it wasn't too bad. And it easily wiped away. Uh, and I, you know, I wiped up the water and, and got the mold and everything and cleared it out. Um, so that was a concern. And I obviously then continued and, uh, looked around the whole perimeter of the house everywhere, uh, where there would be that, uh, the floor would be over the, the flange there of the, of the trailer. On the opposite side here, which is where the computer desk is and the TV and everything, um, there was just a little bit of uh, beaded water and no mold. And the difference between these two sides, I think, is uh, affected by both the fact that the, this is covered, like there's not just natural airflow, there's the couch, and then there was a bunch of stuff stored to really prevent any air and uh, any warm or dry air from really circulating there to keep it dry. Whereas on this side, it's much more open. And uh, there's also my computer, which is, has fans that are moving air and it's moving air that's been warmed by the, the computer's operation. So that kind of kept that side dry. Even in the far corner, it was like completely dry. So that was um, good that there wasn't really much of an issue there. On the other side, like if we go over the fenders of the trailer to the other side of the house, underneath the kitchen cabinetry, uh, there was some beaded water. Again, no mold. And I think it was also um, not as bad because everything is painted and primed there. So the, the bottom, the floor plywood is uh, has some thick primer on it. So there was just beads of water on top of that and it just wiped up pretty easily. Uh, and then opposite to that is the, the front door, or like the main door. And the threshold of that has, uh, which is out in the open, has been getting beaded water on it that we've been wiping up occasionally. Um, so there was also no real mold or any um, issues over there. And I don't have any pictures of any of this because I kind of just, you know, went at it and was cleaning it up. And then as I was finishing, I thought, you know, maybe I should make a video about this and, and talk about it. So the reason that this is an issue is that, like I described, for the last few inches of the floor before you reach the wall, there's basically no insulation between that surface and the metal of the trailer. And... You know, we knew that that could be a potential weak point in the, um, the sort of the shell or the uh, uh, insulated envelope of the building, but we weren't really concerned about it because, you know, like I was joking at the start of the video, it doesn't really get that cold that often here. And obviously it does happen, but it still is like in terms of how much of the year that this could even be an issue, it's a very low priority. So even though this is an issue, I'm still not really worried about it being a persistent thing that we're gonna have to uh, deal with all the time or come up with some kind of major solution for right now. But since the time that we came up with, you know, how to, to build the floor and everything, which was pretty much completely on our own, um, there have been improvements to uh, how to approach this, this floor structure on the Iron Eagle trailer. So um, there's actually a video of myself and the owner of Iron Eagle doing a real life mock-up, sort of demonstrating how you can uh, sort of raise the floor and get insulation in basically to 
to add installation where we have none. And so I'll put a link to that video uh, that you can check out. Uh, and then also uh, Darren Williams uh, from Shelterwise, who's an extremely experienced uh, tiny house builder, um, also did a demonstration showing even further how you can uh, add thermal braking and uh, layers of insulation to, to get even more isolation from the trailer. And I'll put that video up as well, which are super, super helpful. And I would highly, highly recommend to uh, employ these techniques into your construction. Uh, if we were to build again, I mean, obviously we would do that. We, I would sacrifice an inch of the total height um, to get just one inch of rigid insulation in. For our climate, that would probably be enough. Or if you're in a colder climate, you could raise it up a couple inches. You'd probably also be upgraded from two by four to uh, two by six walls. Uh, and sort of like, you know, that corner would come in a lot and get away from the metal of the trailer. So this is something that could easily be considered to be a shortcoming of the Iron Eagle design in particular. But I actually see it as the opposite because our situation really reinforced and, and proved to me that there's a fundamental problem when you have either a lack of insulation and or a close proximity between an interior surface of your structure and the metal of your trailer. Because the metal is such a good conductor of heat. It's like a huge heat sink in an, uh, basically outside that if you have your material right up against it, with not enough insulation value, you're basically going to just conduct heat that's from your interior straight through your material into the trailer and it's gonna dissipate outside. And if it gets cold enough, then you can get it to condensate as well. So not only are you losing heat energy, you are risking condensation, which is, which is exactly what we have with the way that we've built this. And the whole idea behind the Iron Eagle design is to have the vast, vast majority of your floor surface area completely isolated from the trailer by having the sunken area where you build your own wooden and insulated structure and then put your floor on top of that. So nothing is anywhere near the metal except for along the edges. So comparing that to other trailer designs where you have the metal uh, sort of structure of the trailer is also meant to double as your floor joists and then you put insulation bats in between and pretty much put your subfloor straight down on that metal you're basically creating a similar situation do we have to what we have that's only along the edges like every 16 inches or whatever the spacing is of those metal cross members all these cold spots through which you can lose a ton of heat and possibly even have you know, condensation forming on the floor in general. So basically, no matter what trailer you end up with, the, the advice that I'm going to give uh, from our experience and our understanding of both how we've designed our house on the Iron Eagle trailer and, you know, the issues that we had in the way that we've had them is that no matter what trailer you have, uh, really spend a lot of time figuring out your floor structure and how you're going to keep yourself isolated from the metal of that trailer. I know it's easy to want to get a start and to just build your floor and move on from there, but just take a moment and figure out how you're going to do that because it's not something you can go back and add insulation to at a later date. And so there you have it. Um, I would highly recommend that you watch all the Iron Eagle videos to get a full understanding of how that trailer is designed. Uh, and also, you know, the current recommended uh, technique of raising up the structure to get the insulation uh, out over the edges or over the side extensions. Uh, and I'll also, for comparison, uh, for how we did it and why we have an issue with it, uh, I'll link with a card um, to where we started building our floor structure. So there's a couple of videos where you can see how it kind of came together and you'll see the sort of section where there is no insulation where um, there should have been. And if, if we were to do this again, I would absolutely use the newer technique of getting some insulation in there. So some tiny house tips for you on a uh, cold winter's afternoon. That was a 38 minute clip. <laughs>